Hi, so this may be a very specific issue, but throughout my lifelong obsession with thrifting, I have consistently found myself in situations where something 90% fits, I buy it, only to decide later on that that 10% is make or break. This is actually not surprising at all. The myth that bodies were just shaped differently back then is absolutely that. A myth. But throughout history, we've learned many tailoring tricks to make our bodies look like the ideal of the time. And taken out of context, these tailoring tricks can be a little challenging. For instance, humans didn't have linebacker shoulders in the 1980s, but we did have bodacious shoulder pads that made it look that way. If you're channeling your inner Alexis and just going for the full look, then seriously bad hash. If you're a dabbler, the sheer size of these pads can be pretty difficult to balance. In this series, which starts with this video, I'll be taking vintage clothes, nothing too precious that may have significant historical value, deconstructing them to reveal their tailoring secrets, and reconstructing them in a way that I hope maintains the spirit of the original era, but is maybe less challenging to a modern audience. The secondhand market is complex and somewhat problematic at times, which could be its own video. So when one already owns the thing, it's often better to make it work rather than donating it and risk it ending up as surplus and being shipped overseas, especially when you really like the thing. <laughs> Yep, in case you hadn't caught on, I have a super cute jacket that fits me perfectly, right down to the gigantic shoulder pads. Actually, I have two jackets, both purchased on Etsy recently. Both had larger shoulder pads than I was expecting, given the photos. <laughs> Both fit me otherwise. I also don't buy larger clothing and take them in. There is already a dearth of large size clothing in the secondhand market, so the last thing I'd want to do is deplete that further just to chop the thing up. So at the risk of ruining two perfectly good jackets, I'll be using two different techniques to rein the shoulder pads in a little bit on these two different jackets. The lav mic was in prime rustle position here, so this is voiceover just jumping in to translate. This jacket is super cute. I love the fabric, the boxy 80s fit, but one thing I've noticed having studied a lot of vintage fashion is that trends kind of ride in and out like a wave. These are not classic Thierry Mugler shoulders, they're kind of neither here nor there. It's pretty pointless to buy vintage clothing and complain that it's not stylish anymore, but this mid-range shoulder pad just isn't doing anything for my proportions. In the 1980s, designers were really playing with traditional tailoring, both in terms of structure and silhouette. This jacket, for instance, is completely unlined, untailored, meaning it doesn't have any of the traditional pad stitching, very little support inside. It's a soft jacket. The shoulder pads are just kind of popped in there, so I can easily pop them out. Now, if you're 19 year old Jess, you call this grand and go on your way. However, do you notice how schlumpy the whole thing just got? That's because the shoulder pad is drafted right into the pattern. The shoulder slope subtracts the height of the pad, meaning it's much more rectangular, and the sleeve cap adds the height of the pad. So if we're going to properly subtract this pad, and on this jacket we are completely taking the pad away, we'll have to alter those two areas at least. Okay, so there are a couple of ways to go about this alteration, and I'm going to do one per jacket. I'm going to start out with the soft jacket, and we're going to do what I call a gentle alteration, which actually preserves all of the fabric. So I've already taken out the shoulder pads, obviously. Next, I'm going to unpick half of the sleeve cap. The construction of this jacket is actually really, really simple. The inside of it is surged and then sewn. Actually, parts of it are still raw, if you really want to know. First, you have to unpick that outer seam. Then you have to unpick the serging. Unpicking the serge is a lot easier than it may look. There's really just one stitch that's holding the whole thing together, so once you unpick that, the rest of it just kind of falls apart. Okay, so I know it's kind of tempting to just either rip the seam apart or, you know, to just like cut it off, but I highly recommend actually unpicking all of the seams rather than cutting them. When you properly unpick all of the seams, you get a much better idea of what the overall pattern looked like originally with the seam allowance. Plus, you're actually preserving all of the fabric, so you have more fabric to work with. If it's cut, it's cut. If you have unpicked the seams, then you can always re-sew them later. I kind of like doing reversible alterations in general because it's really amazing how often trends trickle in and 
out. I mean, obviously this is from the 1980s, so shoulder pads have kind of come and gone several times in the meantime. I mean, remember like back in 2016 when everyone was wearing off the shoulder tops and then the trend kind of went away and then in 2020 it was back and I guess it's still kind of going, sort of. I mean, it just goes to show you that trends are fickle. If you like it, wear it. Okay, so go and take out all of this junk that comes off of the surge. So now you see we kind of have this like floppy cold shoulder, another trend that just wants to come back over and over again. You may also be wondering why I haven't actually unpicked the shoulder seam yet. And that's because you can't really fit the shoulder area without unpicking the sleeve cap. That has to be fully unpicked. But the actual shoulder seam, it's kind of easier to leave it intact so you can just like pinch everything up and not have to worry about the thing like falling off because it's completely unpicked. What I'm going to do is kind of pick up like the, the little bit of excess from the shoulder pad. I'm going to pinch it until it looks about right in the mirror. I've got a pin and I'm just going to pin that little bit of excess out. So I'm gonna make sure that it feels okay. So now I'm going to actually take this off. I'm going to lay it flat on a table and I'm gonna kind of pin everything out in the way that I would sew it and then try it on again to make sure that I like all of that placement. Okay, so I have the choice of whether I'm going to bring the shoulder seam back or forward. Because there's a dart right here, I'm going to go forward. It actually completely changes the way that the shoulder looks when you put a shoulder seam backwards or forwards facing. When you put it more forwards facing, you naturally kind of look more like closed in, <laughs> like almost hunched over. When you put it farther back, you naturally look like you have a little bit better posture. Okay, so I've pinned that excess out. It's really not much, like 3 eighths of an inch. Since this is more of a gentle alteration, I'm not going to redo the sleeve cap, which I'll be doing on the next version. I'm actually going to be tucking in the excess a little bit. Me again. So the fit was good. The shoulders were where they should be, but once I removed the shoulder pad, the boxiness of the body didn't make sense anymore, which checks out the proportions are intended to be balanced with the strong shoulder. I decided to take the fit in a bit. This could be done via a dart at the front. Since there is a patch pocket on this jacket, I will be nipping in the waist instead. I marked the new side seam and graded it gently into the old seam. I tapered the alteration off before hitting the armpit because I don't want to affect the arm side at all. Time to seam rip the shoulder seam. The shoulder slope is cut on a slight bias and the gray tape you see here is to stop it from stretching. Nice little tailoring trick there. I marked the new shoulder slope in chalk. Probably use a ruler for this, don't just eyeball it like I did. I hand stitched the new shoulder seam with a new ribbon on top. I properly pinned the sleeve cap in place. You can see all the excess fabric from both the sleeve cap and the shoulder edge. Again, make sure you taper the alteration into the existing seam. I hand sewed the sleeve cap and the side seam as well, keeping this a very lo-fi alteration. I tacked the newly hefty seam allowance back toward the shoulder. This actually kind of makes a new shoulder pad. My number one tip for altering anything is steam, steam, press, and steam. Seriously, you could botch the whole alteration, but if it's nicely pressed, it will probably still look okay. You'll also want to break out the tailor's ham here. Using the smaller side as a base for pressing shoulders is literally what it's meant for. This turned out pretty good. Not a huge change, but again, it was 90% there to begin with. <laughs> I did leave some raw edges inside. 
This fabric doesn't really fray, but I may decide to add a lining to this jacket one day. Maybe a future video in this series. Okay, now onto the second jacket and a more proper version of this alteration. Okay, so this is the second jacket and I really like it. It's a little bit bigger, more boxy than the first. It's got this kind of cool like dark academia vibe to it, which I really like. <laughs> the shoulder pads are maybe even more bodacious on this one, um, which, you know, again, is great. But for my frame, it just makes me look like I'm wearing my mother's jacket, which I very well could be. My mom loved to rock a good shoulder pad. This has a little bit more structure to it, not much. It's like got a partial lining and then the shoulder pads are just kind of like dinked in there, you know? First things first, gotta pop out both of those shoulder pads. You always want everything to be balanced. Don't do one side at a time. Try to do both sides kind of in tandem because you just wanna make sure that everything is symmetrical and balanced. This time I unpicked the entire sleeve and of the shoulder seam as well. Both sleeves are off. Uh, so now I'm actually going to take this over to the iron and I'm going to press all of the seam allowances flat. You really wanna kind of start at ground zero. You're like literally making this thing sort of in reverse at this point. So yep, I'm gonna go and press all of these seam allowances flat so that we have a nice flat surface to work with and mark on when we start to take off some of the extra fabric. Here it is, uh, ironically, this jacket would actually make a really nice vest, I'm realizing, but that is not why we're here today. I'm actually going to use the shoulder pads from the other jacket that I didn't use. The shoulder pads from this jacket were a solid block of foam, so they're gonna be more difficult to take apart and put back together. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to put the shoulder pad in place. I've got my shoulder pad more or less where I want it to be. So now I'm going to carefully fit the shoulder of the jacket over the top of it. When you're doing this, really look at the body of the jacket because you don't want any weird drag lines that are happening right here. You wanna make sure that you're pulling this up enough to get rid of all of that sagginess. If I pull this, then you start to see the back hike up a little bit. You don't want that. Remember to account for seam allowance. You don't wanna take out so much that you don't have a seam allowance at the shoulder. Now that I know my numbers over here, how much I need to take out, I'm actually going to take off all of this and I'm going to lay it flat on the table and actually mark things properly with a ruler and chalk. I first marked the new seam allowance, then the stitch line. This jacket is being stitched by machine. I sewed along the chalk stitch line. I marked out the new armhole, again tapering the new line into the old seam and trying to change the overall shape of the armhole as little as possible. I did the same for the sleeve cap. I sewed two lines of basting stitches, one quarter inch and three eighths inch from the top edge of the new sleeve cap. Usually you have notches that tell you when to start and stop these lines of basting, but I obviously didn't. So I started and stopped about halfway down the sleeve cap. I pulled the bottom threads of the two rows of stitches simultaneously to gather the sleeve cap and used my good friend the tailor's ham to steam it into a nice shoulder shape. I pinned the sleeve into the armhole, jacket inside out, sleeve to the inside of the jacket, right sides together. Again, I had no notches to match up here, so I just matched up the bottom of the arm side that I knew hadn't changed and fiddled around with the top until both sleeves were even and balanced. 
Generally speaking, you want just a tad more sleeve cap volume to the back, so the peak of the sleeve cap should sit slightly backwards. I stitched the sleeve into the armhole. My tip here is to keep the jacket inside out with the arm flipped inside the jacket and stitch along the inside, like you're in a sleeve cave. I tacked the shoulder pad into the shoulder with a running stitch along the shoulder seam. Et voila! Again, there are some raw edges in here, but again, this is a prime candidate for a lining. <laughs> it's pretty pointless to buy vintage clothing and complain that it's out of style, but it is really satisfying to find a fun piece and make it your own. And if we can keep good clothes in circulation, even better. Hit subscribe to keep a weather eye out for more of these vintage redos. And of course, more of my usual historical vintage-y tomfoolery. Bye!